hello. So, um, yeah, I didn't get to do a, another update last night or this morning. Um, I made it from Nalostugan right up to the head of the Vistas Valley, Vistas Valley. Um, and I camped maybe like 700 metres or something. Um, it was quite chilly. Um, towards the kind of, at the start of the night for certain it started to sleet, uh, which was interesting. I was a bit worried that it was going to turn into kind of full blown snow, but it didn't. So that was no problem. Um, <coughs> I realised last night that I have a little bit more time to get back to Abisko than I thought I did. Uh, so, yeah. But I, I made really good time yesterday. I mean, the nine kilometres down from Nalo Stugan to Vista Stugan uh, it was really quick. The path was nice and it was just boosh. Um, up Vistas was less fast, um, but I made really good progress. I must have done about 20 kilometers, so bearing in mind my average this uh, this trip, that's pretty good. Uh, that I'll be pushing at the top of the, the average. Um, today I walked from the top of Vistas where I'd camped and I've walked all the way past Alajura Stugan, uh, up the side of Alajura Yavi, uh, to Raduga Stugan, which is where I am now. Uh, it's not really a, a hut. Well, it is a hut. It's just a hut. It's not like a mountain hut. It's just a, an overnight place where you can attempt to make a fire and... Um, yeah, sleep. <laughs> um, today I just got my head down and walked because uh, because there was nothing else to do. Um, must have walked today about kind of in the region of 13, 14 kilometers. And tomorrow the plans to walk to Abiskajura Stugan. Um, and then Saturday walked to the campsite that I stayed on on the first night which is kind of like six kilometres or something non-existent um, and then on Sunday my train leaves at like 4pm or something my train for Stockholm so I'll have to make sure I catch that. Otherwise it'd be a bit awkward. Yeah, I kind of like decided I'd stay in Sweden. Don't think it's really a great excuse for being late for work. Um, <clears throat> one of the great things about going away on one's own is that actually, I mean, obviously there are pros and cons about going on your own and going with people. Um, one of the great things about going on your own is that you get a lot of chance to just do what you want to do. You don't have to talk to anyone else. You don't have to, <laughs> not that that's necessarily the most difficult bit, but you don't have to discuss whether you're going to have a break now or in 20 minutes time. You can just sit and have a 20 minute, 30 minute break if you want, uh, whenever you want. Um, and you know, you don't have to take other people's physical limits into consideration when choosing how far you're going to walk or or what kind of difficult terrain you're going to push yourself over today. Um, just remembering the Chaktia to Nalo Pass, which was tough. Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm quite happy to be travelling on my own. It's quite nice to have lots of peace and quiet and time for reflection. Um, it occurred to me earlier today that I haven't actually seen 
a single human being in um, something like four or five days now since I met the German people at Una Alkslas Stugen. Um, and I'm not, not really expecting to see anybody, particularly until I reach Abisko. I mean, it, it might happen, it might happen any time, but um, I'm not particularly expecting to see people out in the mountains here. Yep. Well, I think that's all I've got to, to say today. Bye.